Why it is important to have a hereditary head of state. August 15, 2019 by Anna von Reitz. Quite simply, it beats them at their own game. The Normans conquered and settled England. King John was basically disinherited by his own father and left with no land in England and no land in France, hence his nickname, John Lackland. All King John had left was his job as Keeper of the Commonwealth, a position that required him to work closely with the Church and the Pope, to preserve and maintain the orderly operation of the Commonwealth for the greater good of its inhabitants. Even back then, people who had no actual home or claim to land were called inhabitants and residents in England. Paupers, the inhabitants of King John's remaining kingdom, merely resided on a temporary basis under the protection of the Crown, a commercial corporation that provided them with the bare necessities of life, and worked them to death building up properties and businesses belonging to the church. Think workhouses. Internment camps. Are you beginning to draw the conclusions that result when these bar attorneys refer to you as a resident of the state of Minnesota? Their shtick is that the entire world must be ruled by people with the proper pedigree. Why? Because they are monarchists. They think that they are elite and that their elite status has been conferred on them by a king who is even more elite. Therefore to preserve their own purportedly special status, they have to support the claims of the king who gave this special status to them. And God forbid that anyone else believe anything different or live under any different system, because then they wouldn't be special and elite anymore. This is what happens when people forget that they already have the highest status imaginable as children of God. They claim that their queen is the natural ruler of England, France, America, Australia, etc., 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 and this appeals to her vanity and her pocketbook, but it really isn't about her. It's about promoting her, so that the elitists supporting her gain more power, more prestige, and more money. To the extent that they can bamboozle themselves and everyone else into believing this tripe, they succeed in their other agenda, which is to bilk people who aren't elite, all the paupers, under color of law. However, William the Conqueror, was a renegade as a king, and a realist as a man. When he died, he made all his senior nobles who helped him conquer England, sovereigns in their own right, and bequeathed land to them and their heirs forever afterward in England. To this day, the Norman patent underlies every stitch of land in England and everything that derived from the Doomsday Book accounting established by the Normans as under their claim. These men, who were still barons owing fealty to William's heir in France, became kings in their own right in England. The worldview of the monarchists was shattered, mere men could become kings. This is why the barons were able to force King John to abide by the Magna Carta and the reason the Magna Carta became the driving force behind English land law for 500 years. It was only in the 1750s that the English land law was eroded by Lord Mansfield's pollution of land law with admiralty law to create equity law, the perverse form of law practiced by territorial courts in America today. In America, the land law persisted as a result of the War of Independence. Worse, one of the Norman kings in their own right, had moved to America and one of his progeny sided with the colonials against George III. Like his illustrious ancestor, William the Conqueror, William Belcher, Belcher bequeathed sovereignty in their own right to all the continental soldiers who fought in the War of Independence, and to all Americans who would be born on our soil forever afterward. This time, not only a handful of barons became kings. An entire people became sovereigns in their own right. The end of the road for the monarchists was in sight. This was viewed as a death blow to monarchy as an institution. If millions of common people could be elevated to the status of kings, the elites would have nowhere to go, no basis to make their claims of special status. When William Belcher took on the role and responsibility of being head of state, he clearly understood and agreed that this was an office he was serving in order to get this country recognized and enabled to do business in international trade. The monarchists wouldn't do business with us otherwise. So he used his royal ensigns as a king in his own right, his national coat of arms, as the basis to issue the great seals of both the United States and the United States of America. You can see this for yourself, simply by looking up the coat of arms being used by the Belchers at this time in history. It doesn't mean, obviously, that a Norman king who conferred sovereignty on all Americans was a monarchist himself, nor does it imply that any of his progeny are monarchists, either. 
It is the simple fact that William Belcher had a superior form of sovereignty to the kings of England who as heirs of John Lackland were kings of the Commonwealth. When he stepped onto the stage, the monarchists were beaten at their own game. And they still are. So long as a bell share maintains the office of head of state, even according to their own rules and traditions, the monarchists must recognize the sovereignty of our states and our people, which has been bequeathed to us under the settlement of the Norman Conquest. The kings of the Commonwealth and their elitist supporters have tried many ways to undermine these basic facts, most recently by upending and leaving the land and the land law by going to sea, but at the end of the day, they are still at sea and their equity law, which they have used as a spearhead to try to overcome our lawful claims, is not recognized nor practiced by any judicial court in America. Wake up, people! You are engaged in a battle of wits against ruthless adversaries who wish to promote a new form of feudalism, commercial feudalism, and they aim to make you all into serfs and slaves, already far worse off than any counterparts in the Middle Ages. A serf in the Middle Ages gave 10 to 25 percent of his income each year to the king and the church combined. You are now being diddled out of over half of your income, and more demands are soon to be placed upon you, using currency inflation as a weapon to tax and devalue what you have left. Wake up, America! The precious birthrights that our forefathers all fought for, Norman royals and every man alike, are being undermined by lawless criminals intent on stealing by guile what they could never win by force of arms. James Clinton Belcher isn't standing up as head of state to enslave you. He is standing up to challenge this new form of feudalism based on hot air and paper. He is doing it to protect you and your assets from the false claims of these seaborne pirates. Please note, he isn't doing it because it is safe, nor, thanks to your own ignorance, because it is a popular thing to do, it should be, but isn't. He is doing it because it is the right thing to do. We must all oppose commercial feudalism with might and main, with determination and education, with heart and with soul and with whatever means and eloquence we can use to expose the plots of those engaged in these evils, all aimed at promoting their self-interest at the expense of the entire earth and everyone living upon it. The American head of state stands for the sovereignty of each and every state of the Union, and for the sovereignty in their own right of the people of this country. He stands for your right to own private property. His ancestors fought, bled, and died so that you could have these precious birthrights, but others have tried to steal these bequests from you by deceit, by lies, and by unconscionable contracts. Wake up, wake up, wake up! The men who gave you these gifts in the first place are not the ones trying to steal them from you now. James Clinton Belcher is standing between you and rapacious pirates. Don't you think it is about time you woke up and helped him push back? We call on each and every one of you to help break the chains of commercial feudalism before they are solidly locked around your necks. Come home. Declare your birthright political status. Place your declaration and reconveyance of your good name which your parents gave to you on the public record of these fiends, and make them accountable. Then join your state assembly and engage the process of true self-governance which you are heir to. See this article and over 1900 others on my website here, www.anavonrights.com. To support this work look for the PayPal buttons on my website.